this morning it is the last morning, first, uh, Sunday morning, before we celebrate the birth of Christ. The message is going to come this morning. It's going to be short, as God mm -hmm. says otherwise. But there's something that he brought to my attention that I am going to bring to your subject this morning is waiting for Christ. We're waiting for Christ. Second chapter, starting at the 25th verse. Luke chapter 2, starting at 25. The passage starts, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and, the, and, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, <coughs> Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God. He said, Lord, now let us die, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy will. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. As I was in the back studying, Number of listening as always, and I, I, I was thinking back to when I was a child. I know that was a long time ago. Some of y'all may not think I can remember back that far, but I, I remember back when we were, when I was a child, and when my siblings were children. We would were waiting on Christmas. We would wait on Christmas Day, and talking about going to bed early, Christmas Eve. Boy, if it got dark and we was heading close to the bed around then, we wanted Christmas morning to show up so we could get some some toy. We would go to bed early and uh, couldn't go to sleep because you were so excited, but we would try. We'd get in there and lay in the bed or something. We usually got to, got to bed about 8 o'clock or something like that shortly after that. Other than staying up late like as usual, we'd go to bed because we were waiting, anticipating what we would have the next day. Because we had thought we knew what we were going to have. We had decided when when the toy books come out, we'd go through and know what we get to. We'd go through and point out what we wanted. And the sealed book would come out by then. And, you know, you get through and you see all these toys that you know, we wanted, we could ask for. Mm -hmm. And the waiting was the hardest part. You get there and you try to go to sleep and you couldn't go to sleep. Well, if you remember how that was, if you remember how the way how the waiting was, the anticipation was, then you see how Simon was waiting for Christ. Mm -hmm. Simon was a just man, he was a devout, follower of God. And he was waiting on the salvation of Israel. God had promised a Messiah. God had promised a Christ. And he was waiting. The Spirit of God came to him and said, you won't see death until you see the salvation. Until you see the Savior of your people, you will not see death. And the Spirit came upon him and, and sent him into the temple. And as, while he was in the temple, the children, the father and mother of, of Jesus came in to do for him what was custom of the law. That was probably circumcision. But, but they came in, and once he saw the child, you remember on Christmas morning when you got what you wanted? When you got that red rider, BB gun? All right. 
When you got that misbehaving dog, when you got that gift that you wanted, that you asked for, that you didn't believe you were going to get, and you got it anyhow. Do you remember the joy that you had? Could you imagine seeing the salvation of your people? Could you imagine seeing everything you had hoped for, everything God had promised you, there before you? And you had a, not only to see it, but to lift it up. Yes. To see what God had promised had come to pass. Yes. God is so good, and we are, we're not worthy. You know, when I look back, and I, I, was, I was reading on the internet some, some letters to children to Santa. These children obviously hadn't been that good. One of them said, Santa, I ain't been that good, so you can give me anything you got left in the bag, but just leave me something. One of them said, let me read this, because I wrote this down, I, I want to get this right. I'm not going to ask for a lot, Sam. Here's my list. I want to edge a sketch animator, two packs of number two pencils, Crayola fat markers, and the big gift, I want my own color TV, flat down 36 inches. Well, maybe you can drop off the pencils. I don't want to be greedy. <laughs> we all have our list of things that we're waiting on, things that we want to happen in our life. But have you ever thought that everything you need is already there? God has given you everything that you need in your life. He's given everything you need to survive life down here. God gave you peace. God gave you peace in any circumstance. God gave you patience. Some of us got a little bit more than others. Sustain. <laughs> God has given you faith. <coughs> God has given us healing. Any situation you can name, God has given you an answer for. Anything that you need, God has provided the answer. God has provided everything that you need. The anticipation that you, the waiting that you have. It's not for God to fulfill his part. It's for us to realize it's already done. It's for us to realize God is done just what he said he would do. In every situation, every time, and every calling, God had fulfilled just what he said he was going to do. We have to, you know, seeing what's not that. Faith is what we Lack. The Bible says we have a portion of faith. And if we would just build on our faith, the way you build on your faith is trust God for the little things. If you trust God for the small things, it gets easier for you to trust God for the larger things. If you believe that God can cure a cold, and God cures that cold, then when it comes to cancer, I've already built the foundation. I've trusted God for my cold. I've trusted him for waking me up this morning. I've trusted him for making it through all these 56 years. And now, when things happen, God, we have standing on a firm foundation. We're standing on the love of God. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When Jesus came here and when he hung on the grass and crossed it, it's finished. It was all over with. Everything that you needed down here was taken care of. When he said it's finished, he didn't say it's going to start right after this. It's finished. Satan can do everything he can to try to throw you off, but if you remember that it's already done, it's already peace, it's already. Let me tell you, I was. Listen to a gentleman this morning. 
I can't think of what it was. Brother well known minister, and he was talking about he was in Chicago and he was getting ready to leave. Got up at 3 30 in the morning for a 5 30 flight. And when he got there to the airport, he went up to the county and, and noticed that the flight had been canceled or delayed. And he went up to the woman at the little off desk and she said, the, 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 the flight's been delayed. I've got to get out of here. I'm trying to get home. She said, there's a storm around us. I looked behind here, but there's a storm around us, so they drowned all the plane. Nobody can get in, nobody can get out. Mm -hmm. She said, you want to see? He said, uh, yeah, come around. And she, she asked him to come around and show him the Doppler radar. Mm -hmm. And as he looked at the Doppler radar, there was red all around. Mm -hmm. But there was calm where he was. And so he said, okay, and he sat down in the little thing, this glass, totally glassed in area. And as he sat there, Eventually, the storm came in, and it was violent. You see stuff being blown away all around. But he was in peace. Mm -hmm. There was nothing disturbing him. Although, you know, planes were being buffeted, and people walking around there and, and were being buffeted by the snow and the rain, but he was fine. God has also put a hedge around you. When things are going on in your job, in your family, in your neighborhood, but things are being... Turmoil all around you. You don't have to sit there and be tossed and driven. All right, all right. You can have peace in the midst of the storm around you. You got Jesus. You have peace. You have everything that you're waiting on. You can have everything that you need. As I get ready to sit down, you know, we'll be long. The last thing I want to tell you is this up, the last thing that I read was a story about a man, wealthy man. He and his son, 19-year-old son, he had started a long time ago wealthy collecting expensive paintings mm -hmm. and gold. Museum quality paintings. And he had a son, and his son was in college, and his son left college and decided he wanted to join the military. There was a war going on. And when he, his father was upset, he didn't want to go because he could, he could get killed. His son decided he wanted to go to So he went out. And when his father found out right before Christmas Day that his son had died, he died saving three other men. And Christmas Day, he was sitting there in his, this big room with all these paintings all around him that gave him joy before. He found no joy in And his doorbell rang, and he got up, which was unusual for him, because he had service to do that kind of thing. But he got up and answered the door. And there was a man in a military uniform standing there. He told him, I'm never born to man your son said. Mm. He had a big package in his arm. He said, can I come in? He said, no. He always took the invited in. They walked into this room with all these millions of dollars of paintings. And he said, I, I started not to come. But they let me come home. I knew you, son. You were in the same unit. There was no way I was supposed to make it out of that situation, but your son came and saved me and he died. He said, I'm not a fantastic painter, but I, your son knew I painted. And what I did, I painted a picture of your son. And I want to give it to him. So he unwrapped it and father wept. The striking likeness of his son in that thing. It wasn't worth a whole lot of money. But it looked like his son. He got it up and moved one of the expensive paintings out of the way and put it over the mountain. And hung it up. And he just loved that painting. A few years later, the man died. He had all of it. Millions and millions of dollars of paintings in this one room. And that painting. And his 
will said that these paintings would be auctioned. We'll let them go. So that auctioneer came in and he had all these people in this room willing to buy millions of dollars. He had no other relatives, so he was just going to give them all the world. The first thing that came up to auction was this painting. And all the people sitting around, and, it's not worth a whole lot. Why don't we just leave it alone, move on? Auction is a, and this has to be sold, and it has to be sold first. So we're going to stay here until it's sold. Well, after 10 minutes, nobody bid it on her. Finally, the neighbor who was sitting there just, as, he had the money, but he, he said, I just came in just to see what's going on. I'll take it for $10. So he got a $10 bid. All she said, going once, going twice, sold for $10. After that, he said, the auction is over. We can go on. And he looked around, what? It's over? He said, what? He said, according to the will, whoever takes the sun, mm -hmm. takes it off. If you take God's sun, you take it off. Everything that you need is in the sun. Everything that you desire is with the sun. If you take the sun, you take it all. You take peace. You take everlasting joy. You take everything that you need when you take the sun. Once Simon saw the sun, he saw that the salvation of the people was in the sun. The salvation of God's son is with us all. If you take the sun, don't have to look at the circumstance, what kind of value that the world puts on it. If you take the sun, you have all that you know. So everybody that's waiting on Christmas, for everybody that's waiting on Christmas, if you take the sun, if you take the sun, Everything that you need.